Google Ads display campaigns have long been associated with a remarketing strategy. And I'm sure you've had this situation when you've gone onto a website or you've clicked on an ad that you've seen after completing a search. And then for the next one or two weeks, whenever you're on your phone or whether you're on the internet on your desktop, you keep seeing the same ads and it feels like it's following you wherever you go around the internet. Now, I'm definitely not against using display campaigns for a remarketing strategy because I believe it is still an amazing strategy to use for Google Ads display campaigns. But if that's the only way that you're using it, my strong belief is that you are underutilizing this form of Google Ads campaign. Because when used correctly, Google Display Ads can not only be a great tool for remarketing or following up and continuing to show your ads until you get that sale or conversion, because display campaigns are also a great way that you can introduce your product or your services in a really cheap way. And the reason for that is because display ads are generally about 10% of the price. So if you've got a search or shopping campaign and those ads are costing you about a dollar per click, generally in the display campaign, you'll get clicks for around about 10 cents. Nice. So it can be a great way for introducing your product or your service in a really cheap way compared to search or shopping. And secondly, this can be a great way to grow your database. One of the main ways that I see that display campaigns are underutilized is by setting up a display campaign in order for it to directly promote your app and or promote your email database. So what you're wanting to do there is that you're using the display network to reach out to a wider range of people, even people who may not be completing searches for your products or services. They may not need your service right now, but they can quickly sign up to your email database to get more information, especially around any seasonal promotions that you're running. And then thirdly, the main core way that you can use display campaigns and the main core way that I use display campaigns is to use it as a way to advertise a current promotion or a seasonal sale that you have on. So in this campaign, I'm gonna take you through the three different ways that I set up my display campaigns to get the best use out of Google's display or their image-based ads. But before we get into a screen share, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And because we're talking about Google display campaigns today, if you want more help in how to correctly set up your display campaigns, what I want you to do is I want you to go through and follow that link in the description below. And that'll give you access to show you the step-by-step -step process in how you should be setting up your display campaigns for the best results in 2023. And if you wanna get free access, just follow that link in the description below. But right now, let's jump into a screen share so that I can show you some of the different ways that I've set up and how I use display campaigns in 2023. Let's go. So that first example is of course the remarketing option. And for this one, you can see in here, this display campaign, it's actually our fourth highest spending campaign over this time period of April, May, and June. We've got a target ROAS goal. So we're very much going for conversions. And when you look at it through here, you can actually see that our conversion value cost is performing really, really well. So obviously this search campaign still has a better ROAS of 7.5, but at a 5.15, that is a great result. And what you can also see that we're getting that cost per conversion down underneath the six pounds. So what I wanna do is I wanna take you into this campaign and I just wanna show you how we've gone through and set this up. Now, it's not just all set up in one ad group and this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see is people just group all of their audiences into one campaign. But if you break it down into your different ad groups, so we've got previous customers, we've got no action visitors. So the way that we've segmented this is that people who have gone out into a website and they haven't added anything to cart. So we're just going through to this, these ones a little bit earlier. And then we've obviously got our cart abandoners. And what you can notice in through here is obviously see these cart abandoners, they're actually the ones that are performing the worst. They're not with the lowest ROAS. Now, there are some other reasons for that is because obviously for this client with the cart abandoners, we do have some follow-up emails. The other benefit of this is that this allows you to go in and actually edit the target ROAS by ad group. So I've left this because I wanted to show you how I would go through and tailor this. But because we're looking at a 90 day window of data, what we can actually see is that some of these target ROASs are wrong for these ad groups. So by segmenting this out into different ad groups, if you're using a target ROAS or a target CPA, you can actually go through and adjust these dials dependent on the different ad groups results. So for this one, we would bring that way down to about 175 because we want it to be just just behind what we're achieving now, so at a 1.81. For this one, I would move that up to 425. Now, the reason for why I don't wanna be too aggressive with it is that you always wanna be a little bit behind of what you're actually seeing by around
around about 20%. So what we would do there, because this one has had a 5.5, we would increase that target rolls up to 500, which has got us about 10% behind. And that's how I always see the best type of results. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to set your target ROAS too high because then you limit the amount of impressions that you can see. So that's the first way that I use display campaigns in the pure remarketing strategy, which most people would be aware of. But as I said, you want to break it into different ad groups. So you've got different ad groups based around audiences. And now the second way that I use display campaigns is to have them set up to build our email database. So what I want to show you in through here is this is the display campaign in here. And when we go through and add this segment by conversion actions, you can see in here that when we've got these new email signups that we've had over 9,000 email signups in the last 14 days. And I have confirmed this with the client, that data is actually accurate. What you can see through there is that we've been able to build new leads into their email database for only 18 cents. And this client goes through and has a very aggressive email marketing strategy. So we know that we're getting a really high conversion value off this strategy. And similar to the other campaign is what you can see in through here is we do break this down by the similar audiences and also affinity targeting. And what we're looking at doing in here is that we're looking at really targeting people who don't know about this brand or don't know about these products yet, as opposed to a remarketing strategy. And once again, what we're looking at doing there is building our email database so that we can market our products directly to them via email. Now, the final way that I use display campaigns is that I use display campaigns as a great way to market or pre-register for any upcoming promotions or sale periods that you're entering into. Say for example, Black Friday. Now we know that for e-commerce brands, Black Friday is a big and important money spinner for a lot of e-commerce brands. And when they look at the start of the year of the core months that they need to target, November can be one of those months that really make or break the success of your brand throughout the year. But what is also becoming a challenge as Black Friday has grown, it used to initially just be a day, then it was a weekend, then it was a week. Whereas last year, a lot of businesses were reporting it was basically Black Friday month in that a lot of competitors were running campaigns for the whole month and heavily discounted periods. So a strategy that we put into place, which worked very, very effectively last year, is that a month before Black Friday or a core sales period started, is that we would launch a display campaign and we would segment it out by the audiences which give us the highest level of performance. So we would base it around about the audiences which are giving us the best type of results and we would give them direct messaging through image ads, letting them know that they need to sign up to get early access to their Black Friday deals and that by getting early access, they would also be getting the best level of discount. And once again, this was a fantastic strategy that e-commerce brands can use, but it could also be used for service-based industries where you're asking people to sign up to your database because if you're signed up to their database, you get some extra benefits, which may not even be cost. It may be some extra inclusions at the time of booking. So that is the three ways that I use display campaigns in 2023. So remember that if you wanna see success with display campaigns, you first need to make sure that you've got your display campaigns set up correctly. And to get my step-by-step -step guide, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And once you've got your display campaign set up correctly, if you wanna know how you can optimize your display campaigns so you can improve your results, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thank you again for joining me. My name is Aaron Young, and I look forward to seeing you in this video right here, right now, showing you how you can optimize your display campaigns. See ya.